Hey guys, so I'm on what they call summer break at the moment. It's like August anyways. So I decided that I would try to do a seasick biology paper. Seeing that you guys have that exam on Monday. Tomorrow. Well, yep. Um, and seeing that I have like, I'm not busy, like that busy anymore. So let's see what we have here. I think that I didn't have the 2019 paper. I said I'll just do one of the the most recent one that I have. I have the 2018 paper. So let's see what's going on on it really. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right, number one asks us which of the following features is used to classify a group of organisms in the class insecta shape size shape color or number of segments it's number of segments all right number two says which of the following methods sampling methods is most suitable for estimating the density of mushrooms in a garden and that would be the quadrat. It's like a square, let's say 24 by 24 inches. You count how many, like, say we want to find mushrooms. Say there are five mushrooms in that quadrant. And you know that your quadrant is 25 by 25 inches. And your, what? Your land is, is say, 100 by 100. Right? You would... Find how many times you can get the 25 by 25 out of it and then multiply that by 5 and you should find the density of mushrooms in your garden, right? That's just rough estimates, not real numbers. Oh my god. Number three, living organisms such as plants are affected by abiotic factors. These are the non-living factors which determine where they become, where they become established. Which of the following options lists some of these um, determining factors? Now, abiotic is the non-living and biotic is the living things or are the living factors. Sediment, size, shape, and color. Those are non-living stuff, but that's not what we're looking for. Sunlight availability, soil pH, and minerals. That seems more like it. Parasitism, commensalism, mutualism, those are symbiotic relationships. So that's not it either. And the deforestation, slash, and burn, shifting cultivation. Isn't this like methods of farming? Anyways, so oh, what would you say if three it would go with B or boy? For boy, you know, B start, boy starts with little B. I think you know what I mean. Items four to five refers to the following food web. You know, a food web is a con um compilation or yeah, a compilation of more than one food chain. So you know, plants to squirrel, the oscillate ocelot, sorry, or ocelot. Oh my god! Yeah, this is one food chain here. Plant, squirrel, hawk, that's another. Um, plant, iguana, ocelot. Oh my god, stop saying ocelot. Ocelot, that's another one. Deer, that's another food chain. So number four says, how many food chains are there in the food web shown above? I just did that. Well, that's coincidence. Plant to that one. So that's one. This way to this way. It's two and from here to here that's three all right so let me draw all these over in case you didn't get that so let's use the red first so plants to squirrel to that this is one then let's say iguana to oscillate plants to iguana to that is two and let's use another one let's say Plant to squirrel to hawk. That's three. So number four. 
number four is B. Three, food chains. Let's go down to number five. It says, which of the following statements describes a relationship where the ocelot, uh, ocelot eats an iguana and the iguana eats plants? I'm not even going to do over this recording. All these mistakes are staying in there. Me saying ocelot so many times. Oh my God. Where the oc- ocelot eats an iguana and the iguana eats the plant. Okay. So here we can see that the ocelot eats the iguana, the iguana eats plants. So iguana herbivore, this is a carnivore. Yup. So it says both the iguana and the ocelot are prey. No, 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 no. That would mean that something else would be trying to eat this and the food chain stops there or the web stops there the chain we're looking at here stops there so that's not correct it says both the ocelot and the iguana are predators iguana is not a predator the predators are animals which hunt other animals now the ocelot um is the predator while the iguana is the prey yes that's correct this says both the other both of them are d says both of them are predators and that's not true so number five would be c all right item six refers to the following food web another food web here the first trophic level or trophic level one is represented by this thing right here the phytoplankton because that's where it starts this so this would be the first this would be the second this marine animals could be the third or right here small fish and crustaceans could also be the third and large fish the fourth trophic level it's a terrible four fourth trophic level right no, approximately 10% of the energy stored in food is available to the next organism in the trophy in the food chain because because most of the energy is lost as heat during the process of respiration most of the energy is lost during the process of excretion there are fewer consumers than producers in the food chain many consumers compete for the same food source the answer is a most of the energy is lost as heat during the process of respiration so as you move up trophic levels the energy supplied to the next organism is less because energy is lost through metabolic processes like respiration number eight says which of the following materials is considered non-biodegradable no materials that are non-biodegradable are those that can't be broken down by microorganisms so plant waste animal waste paper cotton cotton wool wood woolen cloth cloth wood those stuff are biodegradable but here we go sardine cans those take years to break down years 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 so many years you can even consider it non biodegradable now number nine says which of the following statement best statements best explains why the coral reefs in the caribbean are at risk there has there has been overfishing of the seas the caribbean is a popular tourist destination 
there have been many hurricanes in the Caribbean or there have there has been an increase in the volume of sewage flowing um flowing what into the reefs the answer is b the caribbean is a popular tourist destination because oh sorry yes the caribbean is a popular tourist destination i just spaced out this is because when tourists come to the caribbean and visit these reefs they increase there is risk of accidentally touching it um polluting it with uh, like bottles and stuff like that and there is even the risk of breaking off a piece of the reef and uh, when when they go diving there is also the risk of um, equipment being coming in contact with the reefs and you know potentially breaking it away breaking it off so there there's increased risk of damaging the coral reefs there because of you know the caribbean being a popular tourist destination number 10 says replanting trees on a bare hillside is an example of reforestation and restoration tennessee number 11 phase four of the graph of population growth is most likely due to now at phase four you can see that there the number of organisms in the population is decreasing can't be because they've become disease resistant that means that they would be either here at phase three or you know the pop the number of organisms are rising in the population high natural birth rate that's definite increase um adequate food and space that could be at phase three where the graph is leveled so competition from invasive species could be um, a factor that com contributes to oh where am i here we go yes contributes to the decline here number 12 when compared to a cheek cell a muscle cell contains more vacuoles ribosomes mitochondria or chromosomes mitochondria that's because those provide energy because the muscles do a lot of work they would most likely or most definitely need more energy than the cheek cells so, of course, they would have more mitochondria. Number 13. Item 13 refers to the following diagrams which show a process by which substances are moved into and out of cells. It says cells, and I'm, get, I'm going to say that that's a membrane right there. So, we're going to be dealing, dealing with osmosis. Now... We see here that the water level decreases and this is a dilute um, sugar solution. So it's safe to infer that there is more water than solute, right? Here it's a concentrated sugar solution. So I'm going to say the solute concentration is higher over here, right? So the reason why there is a decline or decrease in the amount of water here, the water level, on this side is because water moves out here where it's more concentration concentrated to through this this per, um, selectively permeable semi permeable whatever you want to call it membrane and moves into the concentrated sugar solution right so let's see what the question says which of the following options currently defines and describes the process being um, occurring above? We said it's osmosis. We said it's osmosis. And I said water is moving from the dilute to the concentrated solution. So yes, C right here.
and it couldn't be this because it's not the sugar particles or the sugar molecules don't move it's the water molecules that move okay all right so let's move down now to question 14 it says which of the following functions is not correctly matched to the organelle osmotic control the membrane that's true protein synthesis the chloroplast her hereditary materials are kept in the nucleus and the release of energy yes the mitochondria so this is correct this is correct and this is correct i believe the ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis Chloroplasts are responsible for trapping sunlight for photosynthesis, not protein synthesis. I see what they did there. 15 says a mature plant cell is different from a mature animal cell because the plant cell has mitochondria. Both has mitochondria, so that's not the answer. Um, a cell membrane. Both have a cell membrane. The difference is the cell... The plant cell has a cell wall, which the animal cell doesn't. Um, a large permanent vacuole. Yes. Animal cells don't have a large permanent vacuole. Um, a nucleus suspended in the um, cytoplasm. Both have a nucleus in the cytoplasm. So that's not the answer. And we said the answer was C for number 15. Number 16 says, which of the following graphs shows the effect of temperature on an enzyme-controlled reaction? Now, you see temperature here, and they want to know the effect of it, the enzyme activity, when the temperature rises. So you see, the temperature here is the independent variable, and the enzymatic activity is the dependent variable. That means that this here, enzyme activity, only changes if time changes. Right, it depends on time to change in order for it to, you know, react. So or respond. So as the temperature increases, enzymatic activity increases until it gets to its optimal optimal point or optimal temperature. And then the enzyme becomes denatured and enzymatic activity decreases. So I'll go to D for this one. An enzyme is best um, defined as a catalyst which increases the rate of a chemical reaction, decreases the rate of a chemical reaction, increases the rate of a chemical reaction but remains unchanged, as, unchanged sorry, at the end of the reaction or decreases the rate of a chemical reaction but remains unchanged at the end. C increases the rate of the chemical reaction even though it doesn't always and it remains unchanged we didn't choose a because it said best so you know give all the give the full info number 18 which of the following features does not enhance a leaf's ability to absorb solar energy numerous chloroplasts in the palisade cells this does presence of a vascular bundle Transparent cuticle allows the sunlight to go past through and get to the palisade layer where the where I think that that's the layer that is that has the most chloroplast or it's densely packed with chloroplast I should say. So the transparent cuticle is which is the top layer, the extreme top layer of the leaf, is necessary in order for sunlight to pass through in order to get to the palisade layer. Um a large surface area that means that the leaf it's broad so you know it's more coverage there's more coverage for the sunlight so the one that does not enhance the leaves ability to absorb the solar energy would be the presence of vascular bundles that doesn't have anything to do with this at the moment so number 19 says item 19 refers to the following diagram which represents a metabolic process occurring in plants now you know this metabolic process is 
photosynthesis. Yes, because it's chlorophyll in the chloroplast and you know water is necessary, sunlight is necessary and the carbon dioxide is necessary in order to give us the products oxygen and food and in this case food is glucose. I remember when I used to spell glucose with an E like G-L-U-E. No, 19 says the food nutrient pro produced is just went through that. So 19 is B, glucose. It helps as well when doing multiple choice to think about the answers before looking at the answers provided. So you won't, it won't, you won't get easily tricked. Uh, which of the following organisms is a saprophyte? Saprophytes are organisms that feed on dead and decaying material. So we consider those like bacteria and fungi. Cats, that's, an, that's a heterotroph. Amoeba, that's, an, that's a heterotroph as well. Um, mango tree, a tree is a plant that's an autotroph. Bread or mold, mold, bread mold, sorry, that's fungus. So that would be your saprophyte. Number 21 says, items 21, item 21 refers to the following graph, uh, graph and we're seeing light, rate of photosynthesis against light intensity. And we can see that the rate of photosynthesis depends on the light intensity. So as the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases as well until it gets to a point where you know rate of the rate of photosynthesis is constant right there and we're seeing another factor being introduced and this is what the co2 concentration so it says as the rate of photosynthesis increases now this is incorrect we can see that this is incorrect already because as i said up here light intensity is the independent variable and this is the dependent the independent always goes on the x-axis and the dependent would go on the y of course now we need for the light intensity to change in order for the rate of rate of photosynthesis to change that's basically what i mean by the dependent variable and the independent variable so there is an there's a decrease in the carbon dioxide level that's not what the graph is telling us as the light intensity increases yes we're after a good start the rate of photosynthesis also increases until a stationary phase exists when denature denaturation of the enzymes occur no we weren't we weren't told that by the graph we weren't told that by the graph so let's continue as the light intensity increases there is an increase in the rate of photosynthesis until there is no further increase in the rate due to some other limiting factor that limiting factor would be the concentration of co2 so C, as carbon dioxide levels gradually increase, that's not what the graph is telling us. Number two, items, item 22 refers to the following diagram of the respiratory system showing structures in the respiratory system. It seems a bit redundant, but no, it's not. All right, which of the labeled parts represents a rib? right here number two now this would go over the, so this was like the fourth one so these would you know they would be blocking the thing if they actually connected these so there we go and these i think you get the point the answer is two All right, which of the following conditions is an effect of nicotine found in cigarette smoke? Increased heart rate. I think this is something you just have to know. So I think you're supposed to read up on them. I don't know. I don't remember what happened in grade 11, to be honest. 23, 24. 
So the steps listed below are involved in the clotting of blood, which are the following sequences is the correct order of the steps. All right. This is the last one. So the answer is either B or C. So let's see. All right. I think this is the first one. Forgot the R. Then after that, the platelets are activated. So this would be one, this would be two. Then fibrinogen con is converted to fibrin, which helps to trap the blood cells. So let's see, IV, oh, here we go, three, one, two. All right, then, so 24D, that's what I'll go with. Now, 25, what is the main storage product of plants? That's starch, and we know this. Which of the following options currently matches the gaseous exchange structures with the organism? Now humans, it's alveoli. Now fish, between gill filaments and gill rakers, it would be this because I think this is composed of the gill laminae or many of them. So that's what we didn't need, the gill laminae and largely so the answer here 26 is b now it says why is it difficult to develop a vaccine for the co common cold it's because the antigens on the common cold virus change frequently oh my god i don't like how that's save me someone 28 which of the following options best identify some of the transport substances in animals amino acid and hormones one and two sucrose is not transported in animals it's trans glucose and fructose i think are or the reducing sugars are are transported in animals that was 28 so we're at 29. An amoeba or amoeba obtains all the oxygen it needs by diffusion via its cell membrane, while a human needs to have special respiratory surfaces for this purpose. The best reason for this difference is that um, amoeba are small, so they have a large surface area to volume ratio. And humans have, on the contrary, have a, have a, whoa, have a small surface area to volume ratio. And that is why they can't um, transport substances such as oxygen and even minerals and other important stuff that the body needs by simple diffusion. So we have to look for that. So the, um, the amoeba does not require much oxygen. Oxygen cannot pass through the skin of a human. A human requires a larger volume of oxygen. A human's surface area to volume ratio is too small for diffusion to be effective. I think that's what I said. So 29D, 30, translocation of sucrose in plants occurs via specialized vessels, which are thin hollow tubes of lignin. Those are the phloem vessels. 31, under which condition will the high rate of transpiration in plant, okay. Under which conditions will the rate of transpiration in plants be highest? Sunny, definitely, because the heat cause, causes um, increased evaporation. But low wind speed doesn't, so 
high wind speed would be it. So B. Tri um, the rate of transpiration in plants would be lowest if it were cloudy and there was low wind speed. So 32. Persons who suffer from kidney disease are most likely to have a decreased concentration of glucose in the blood, a, an increased concentration of glucose in the blood, a decreased concentration of urea in the blood, or an increased concentration of urea in the blood, and it's an increased concentration of urea, urea in the blood. 33 says locomotion is important to animals for avoiding predators they have to move to get away acquiring food and shelter migration comes in there reproduction they move around to find mates so all three thirty four which of the labeled plants is responsible for I swear my brain be glitching. It says which of the labeled plants? It's not plants, it's parts. Why you keep saying plants and you see parts right there? Which of the labeled parts is responsible for the production of male gametes? So that would be the answer that stores pollen grains in the pollen sacs. So that's number two. In case you didn't do this right here it's pointing the lines are a bit faded oh my god i think that's pointing there one is to point into the stigma that's the f female part this is the anther this long thing here is the filament is it two l's oh my god this is the ovary. I think the point in there would probably be the ovule. Don't remember what this is called, but we learned it for a cape thing. This here is the receptacle. Yeah, this is the sepal. Here we have petals. This here is the style, and there are many more. The anther and the filament together is called the stamen. Yeah, so remember to go through those. 35. The best description of the role of excretion in living organisms is to produce urine. No. Produce feces. That would be like the same thing A is saying, but you know, instead of coming out, the, never mind. <clears throat> C gets it, get rid of toxic waste or get rid of excess waste. Can't use excess waste because the role of excretion overall is to get rid of waste. So, you know, you can't keep, get rid of some and keep some. You get what I'm saying? So, it's to get rid of toxic waste. 36. The role of an effector is to respond to a stimulus. The detector detects the stimulus. Um, which of the following diagrams show the correct direction in which a nerve impulse passes through a reflex arc? It's from the sensor. So would be the effector, detector, here would have the synapses where um, the relay neuron relay, yeah two here, carries the, the stimulus. So, oh here we go, this arrow points down and to there. So it can't be this because you have to come from the sensor to the effector. So we have to go all the way, right? That This is showing that it would never reach the effector. This 
I don't even know how to say that this isn't. All right, the answer is A. 38, which of the following phrases correctly describes the trophic movement in plants? So I think most of them are trophism. So, you know, we have geotrophism. Um, there are a lot more. Phototrophism. that reacts to so it's the growth or yeah growth in reaction to or response to um a certain stimulus so phototrophism would be in response to light and most times they're reversible i believe and the growth or part movement the whole thing does not move it's just a part so 38 i'd say is d 39 says which of the following best describes the term stimulus and response deliberate provo provocation of an organism we're going to stimulus first an organism's exposure to sunlight that doesn't make any sense a wave of excitement in an organism no 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 Perhaps wait, let's hold off on that a bit because this doesn't sound like biology, but it sounds like gonna work. A detectable change in an organism's environment. This is a stimulus, most definitely. D, oh, hold on, we have to go through response first. The movement of an organism. Well, we already ruled A out. The growth of the organism away from light. Oh, this would be negative i think negative phototrophism locomotion of an organism that's not a response oh, lord an organism's reaction to a stimulus okay d seems most suitable now 40 we saw we're seeing here two eyes before and after this is quite dilated and here we see where the thingy reduces the radius of the pupil decreases it says the response is most likely brought about by an increase in the light intensity now if you're in bright light or you're shining bright light into the eye the pupil will constrict or the pupils you have two eyes the pupils will constrict or get smaller or the opening will get smaller in order for less light to go into the eye but if you're in dark areas now it will come it will expand let's say that get bigger the opening gets bigger in order to allow more light to get into the eye 41 which of the following currently in identifies the structured label one two and three this is the effector number three is the effector number two is the relay neurons or the relay nerves Number one is the sensor or receptor or detector. So here we go. We have number one saying all of these. Forty two. The function of the choroid layer in the eye is to focus more most light rays. I think no, that's for the lens. The lens do that prevent internal reflection that's it prevents internal reflection contain maintains the shape of the eyeball the vitreous humor does that and controls the amount of light entering the eye that's the pupil that's how we said up top a while ago to do the so do the other question now 43 says item 43 refers to the following diag following graph which illustrates a measurement of growth in living organisms says which of the following is an incorrect label 
for the y-axis length mass number of leaves or units of time it's units of time units of time goes most often goes on the x-axis as it is an independent variable 44 item 44 refers to the following activities involved in the menstrual cycle now it says which of the following sequences is the correct order of activities now it says 44 repair of the uterine lining ovulation shedding of the urine the uterine lining that's the last thing if ovulation doesn't take place so last and there are four options so put that at four and a three I just said if ovulation doesn't take place, I mean if fertilization doesn't take place, the uterine lining sheds or the uterus lining sheds. The endometrium sheds. Um you oh, this could be first. Development of the graphian follicle and the repair of the uterine lining, then ovulation takes place that's the release of an egg if fertilization doesn't take place no that's where the the thickened um uterus lining sheds itself and that's why we bleed lord <laughs> all right so ivs first then I, 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 44C, 45. The following statements describe the processes taking place within a seed during germination. Embryo uses food to develop radical and plumule. Plumule, that's the last thing, and we're three options, so like C, three. So the answer is either D or D. Anyways, let's see what else. Enzymes break down proteins into amino acids and soluble products move into the embryo. All right. So enzymes break down proteins into amino acids, then soluble products. Of course, they have to break down before they can move in move into the embryo and then the embryo uses the food to develop radical and a plumule so it makes sense 46 the production production of new organisms from one parent only is known as asexual reproduction giveaway right here i think everyone should know that or most people don't make the mistake now read them properly make sure you get them now, which of the following forms of birth control is most likely to be 100% per, effective? Abstinence. But let's see. Condom, diaphragm, tubal ligation, or ligation, birth control pills, tying your tubes. And I think vasectomy for men. Tying your fallopian tubes so fertilization cannot happen because you know that um, fertilization occurs in the tubes. Egg is released from the ovary. Oh my god, so this is the ovary with your egg. The egg comes over to here. In the fallopian tube, sperm meets egg fertilization takes place. Boom. Conception. So conception happens in the fallopian tubes. Not the two of them at the same time though. Because I think they alternate which tube the eggs come from. Or the alter alternate which over the egg comes from each month. Right. 48. A vector is defined as an organism, an organism that transmits diseases. Transmit diseases. 
the per the thing that yes it's true these answer it transmits the disease 49 item 49 refers to the following diagram of flowers from two different types of plants which of the following statements is true for the flowers now this you know Oh, they're talking about pollination. I see pollination. So this would be wind pollinated because of the long filament, you know, hanging from it. So it allow um when the pollen sac get away. When the pollen sac um burst open, releases the pollen on the tip of the anther. You know that the wind blows it, and it it eventually attaches itself or sticks to a stigma. For fertilization in plants to take place so that could be self self fertilization or self pollination and cross pollination this aids in that or fosters it now I'm seeing petals so you know this is not wind you can't even see the anther anywhere on this thing so you know this is not wind pollinated but this is so it says which of the following statements is true for the flowers one is pollinated by hummingbirds two is pollinated by the wind i'm sure about the wind part for number two so both are pollinated by hummingbirds so that's wrong two is pollinated by the wind petals are absent from both one and two their petals on one so that's not true both are wind pollinated um i don't think so so that's not it so a for number 49 50 a 60 year old man has been diagnosed with hypertension that's high blood pressure as well as diabetes which of the following treatments would be most effective for the disease exercising and lowering the intake of salt yes because he has hypertension high blood pressure you Reduce the amount of salt intake and the refined carbohydrates for the diabetes. Remember, they say something about when you have diabetes, you have sugar. So, yeah. 51. Which of the following best describes a chromosome? The two forms of the same gene, that's an allele, I believe um structure made up of dna wrapped around histones histones those are the eight proteins you know you wrap the wrapping group of groups of eight and those are called chromatins nucleic acid that contains all the genetic information that's either dna or rna And it says part of a DNA which carries genetic information to produce a protein and that your that my dear is a chromosome. 52. As a result of mitosis, each daughter cell has a variable number of chromosomes. No mitosis produces the same amount as the parent. Twice the number of chromosomes as a parent. Nope. The same number of chromosomes as the parent. Yes, it's genetically identical. Two of them too. Now, which of the following processes will result in genetically identical offspring? Clo cloning, mutation, fertilization, or crossover? It's cloning. Genetically identical. The rest of these will cause genetic variation. Mutation, fertilization, and the crossing over. This happens in meiosis to foster genetic variation. Um... Fertilization, the two, the junction or yeah, of two haploid cells, a male and a female, and you know you get some genes from your parents, some from your some from your mom, some from your dad. You're not sure which one you get from who, so you know that's why your brother won't look exactly like you. Um, mutation, mutation is caused by. An error in the genetic code and that causes variation. A man with blood group A married a woman with blood group B. The, they had two children each with blood group AB. There's a two dominance. 
the allele A and B are described as being codominant. Fifty five variation in a population is due to mutation, crossing over asexual reproduction produces offsprings that are genetically identical to the parent, so there's no variation, so it's one and two. So fifty five is A. Fifty six, which of the following features is not a characteristic of meiosis? Maintenance maintenance of a di of diploid number genetic recombination of alleles yes that causes the variation crossing over of chromosomes yes that happens random assortment of genes that is the same as b or is the same thing if you read you'll see that they're basically the same thing random assortment and genetic recombination but okay i'll go with a for this but maintenance of a hap of the haploid number not sure what that's trying to say. 57. It says Tarzan and Jane, both of whom are heterozygous for blood groups A and B respectively, can have offspring that are likely to be. Alright, so let's see. Tarzan is A. So I, A, I, O. And Jane is B. I, B. I O no the O is the recessive so if you cross this you'll get I'm not going to write back the I for interest of space but you'll have A B here you'd get A B blood type A B codominance um blood group B blood group A because you'd get A O and O O would be blood group O it's a recessive so 25% a b 25% b 25% a and 25% o 57 is d Fifty eight. which of the following descriptions is true about natural and artificial selection occurs in domestic populations occurs in natural populations involves genetic modification largely controlled by the environment no that's not for artificial um if these were switched probably b would be the answer produces great biological diversity or produces a very different organism from natural populations c A species is best defined as a group of organisms that can imp interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Yes. Now, I think this, the mule is a great example of this. It's the offspring of a horse and a donkey and the mule is sterile. It cannot produce a fertile the mule itself cannot produce offspring that's what i'm saying so the the mating between the horse and the donkey produced an organism or yes organism or offspring that's infertile oh we're at 60 the last one item 60 refers to the following diagram which shows the stages one, two, three, and four in the production of insulin by genetic engineering. In which stage of, in which of the stages above can insulin be produced by the bacterium? Here, at stage four, where the recombinant gene will replicate along with the bacteria. So that's it for the 2018 paper. Hope this helped. So yeah, I'm done. So bye, bye, bye guys. And all the best on your biology exam tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll do another paper today. And I'll, I don't know about the chemistry either. But I'll see what I'll, if it works out and stuff. If so, you'll see the videos being posted. If not... 
I didn't get around to doing it, but I'll try. So all the best on your exams tomorrow, guys. Come and fly.